welcome all to the second part of firearm injuries in this lecture we will be learning about the different types of firearm uh, injuries that can happen and how the range of firing affect the firearm injuries secondly we will be learning about the difference between entrance wound and exit wound in case of a firearm injury third point of discussion is the crime scene investigation in case of a firearm uh, death then in the fourth point we will uh, discuss about the necessary uh, things that we have to uh, look into while doing autopsy of a case of firearm death next point of discussion is the preservation the marking and the packing of exhibits that we obtain during autopsy and lastly the identification marks how to uh, put identification marks on the exhibits so uh, firearm injuries the result of a projectile or the missile and the associates of missile uh, includes the firearm injuries this the firearm injuries is the result of the projectile and the associates of projectile hitting the body and the expansion of gases on leaving the muzzle end produces the sound of firing and the sound of firing is also known as the reporting of firing so besides the missile which can be a bullet or a pellet some associates uh, may also be found on the firearm injuries like flame and heat smoke and gases gunpowder particles and wads in case of shotguns the flame and heat the muzzle flash the flash of fire from the muzzle end is due to the oxidation of gases and a tongue of flame which follows the missile you can see in the picture the tongue of the flame that follow the uh, bullet and the smoke and gases the temperature at the muzzle end so, or uh, when the bullet exits the muzzle end the temperature may become uh, around uh, 5200 degree fahrenheit or so and some gunpowder particles which may be burnt or partly burnt or un unburnt uh, gunpowder particles may be associated with the bullet and in case of shotguns another uh, special associates is wad which separates the gunpowder column and the pellets the factors that uh, influence a firearm injury are the type of firearm the type of cartridge that is used in the firearm the type of projectile the muzzle velocity the range of firing the angle of firing the time since firing that is uh, healing can be seen in old wounds and uh, ricochet of bullet part of the body struck and nature of the target of all these factors the most important factor is the range of firing and the type of firearm so how the range of firing will affect the firearm injury so uh, according to the range of firing the firearm injuries can be classified as contact firing close range firing and long range firing so contact firing means the muzzle end is in contact with the body part or the firing is up to 8 cm and contact firing is otherwise known as point blank range of firing next is a uh, close range firing that is firing up to 2 yards that one yard is about 3 uh, feet and 2 yards uh, approximately 6 feet or about 2 meters so close range firing is about uh, within 2 meters and long range firing is beyond 2 uh, meters so what will be the features of contact firing or what we can expect in a firearm wound if the gun is Uh, fired within 8 cm or contact firing or point blank firing so in contact firing the muzzle end is in contact with the body part 
and uh, this type of firing or contact firing is commonly seen in suicidal firing and uh, the muzzle may produce a wound of entry as well as a wound of exit because of the high velocity projectile and uh, the missile or the bullet or the pellet and its associates may enter en masse the entire products of firing will enter the body sometimes gases may accumulate in the uh, body part co uh, causing cavitation and this may also lead to bursting or mutilation of the body part what will be the features that will be found in the wound of entry so uh, whether the firearm is a shotgun or a rifle or a revolver or pistol the wounds will be similar almost similar in appearance the wound will be single and large if uh, bullets are being used and uh, larger than the diameter of the missile and wound of exit due to the bursting of the part as the uh, gases and associates of the missile uh, will accompany the missile and uh, this uh, accumulation of gases causes expansion of the area and so the diameter of the wound of entry in case of a contact firing will be more than the or larger than the diameter of the bullet shape uh, will be varied it can assume the shape of uh, cruciate uh, cruciform or stellate and the margins are usually inverted due to back pressure of the gases the expanding gases which enter through the uh, wound of entry will be will exert a back pressure so the margins of the wound of entry will be inverted and usually the margins are irregular or ragged the cranium and, and abdomen may burst open and the markings of the muzzle end may be present on the body part you can see the markings of the muzzle end here like this the muzzle uh, end marking may be present on the body part in case of contact firing or point blank range of firing the missile and its associates enter en masse the entire uh, bullets or the product of uh, firing will enter en masse and due to the flame that is expelled from the muzzle end the tract of injury also will be burnt and due to gases there is increased carbon monoxide level so the color of the uh, wound of entry will be cherry red in color and uh, if we examine the inside of the entry wound gunpowder particles also may be present it can be uh, completely burned or partially burned or unburned gunpowder uh, may be present inside the wound if uh, the shot is by a gunshot uh, uh, gun wads also may be present inside the wound so during autopsy if we can collect the wads this will uh, give the uh, a rough idea about the caliber of the shotgun cartridge sometimes a piece of uh, cloth uh, may be uh, torn and pushed inside the uh, entrance wound by the missile and it can be found inside the wound and can be retrieved uh, during autopsy and due to negative pressure the cloth hair tissues or blood may enter the muzzle and you can see the back splashing here or back splatter uh, and uh, uh, due to negative pressure the cloth uh, hair tissues or uh, blood of the victim may enter the muzzle and this is called back splatter and this is seen only in case of contact firing and if the contact with the skin is loose then gas is released settle nearby which produce a circular zone known as corona next what will be the characteristic appearance of a wound of exit in case of contact firing so the wound of exit uh, will have the shape of a laceration with inverted margins and uh, with a bullet the wound is single and uh, in case of uh, pellets it may be multiple and uh, sometimes the pellets may not escape from the body uh due to decreased energy of the pellets and it may be found inside the body and uh, 
sometimes wound of exit also will not be found in if pellets are being used so that was the characteristics finding in entrance and exit wound of close uh, or point blank firing now the second point is about the close range firing that is up to 2 yards or 6 feet or about uh, a distance within 2 meters in this case the wound of entry uh, the injury result due to missiles and its associates and uh, we can deal with one by one so uh, the projectile or the bullet on hitting the body produces an abrasion or contusion which will be seen as a circular Uh, one to three millimeter diameter reddish brown or dark brown ring known as the abrasion or contusion column. Then the oil from the barrel or the dirt from the atmosphere may be carried onto the surface of the bullet, and this bar uh, this uh, dirt or oil gets deposited internal to the abrasion collar. This will produce a dirt or smudge or grease collar which is 1 to 3 mm wide and almost black in color and the third collar will be a lead collar and uh, the lead collar is uh, attributed to a naked bullet or a lead bullet and in uh, in these the lead particles from the bullet get deposited internally uh, to uh, dirt or smudge collar which produces lead Uh, collar and this lead collar can be detected radiologically or on microscopical examination of the wound of entry and internal to the lead collar is the actual wound of entry so uh, due to uh, due to the associates of the missile uh, in case of a close range firing that is within 2 uh, meters uh, three types of collars can be seen abrasion collar grease collar and a lead collar lead collar if the gun is uh, firing a naked bullet and the associates of missile produce injuries up to a certain distance and only if the part is bare and if it is a clothed part the associates of missile will not exert any effect and the injuries are produced outside the three collars due to the Uh, associates of the missile now we can see uh, what are the injuries that can be caused by the associates of firing in a close range firing that is up to 2 meters flames can cause uh, burns or singing of the part and uh, in case of revolver or pistol uh, within a range of 2 to 4 inches injuries can be produced in case of rifle about 6 uh, to 8 inches and in case of shotgun about 10 to 12 inches uh, heat can produce uh, scorching to the affected part and uh, you can see the range that is revolver or pistol in about 1 uh, foot uh, rifle within 1 to 1 and a half feet and uh, shotgun 2 feet the effect that uh, smoke and gases produce can be a uh, blackening smoke deposition which is also called as smudging or fouling revolver or pistol within a range of 1 uh, foot uh, rifle within 2 feet and shotgun within 3 uh, feet gunpowder or uh, gun uh, or carbon particles or unburnt uh, gunpowder can be seen as tattooing which is also called as stippling or peppering in case of revolver or pistol 1 to 2 feet rifle 2 to 3 feet shotgun 3 to 9 feet and wads in case of exclusively for shotgun it can cause abrasion as well as contusion within a range of 10 to 12 feet now regarding the uh, characteristic of wound of entry at close range firing the injury will be usually circular it can be oval or elongated if the bullet is fired at an angle so if the bullet is entering perpendicular the injury will be circular uh, in shape and if it is entering at an angle or tan tangentially the injury will be having the shape of oval or it can be a elongated 
uh, injury and the size of wound of entry is smaller than the diameter of the missile because of the elastic recoil of the skin in close range uh, firing the size of entry will be smaller than the diameter of the missile because of the uh, elastic uh, recoil but in point blank firing the wound of entry will be larger than the bullet due to the expansion of gas the size of wound of entry is smaller than the wound of exit and rarely both may be equal margins are inverted in case of close range firing wound of entry and up to a certain distance there are injuries due to associates of missile that you have uh, seen in the earlier slide bleeding is relatively less and uh, there are increased carbon dioxide levels so the color of the entrance wound is cherry red swelling may be present and they can occur homogenization of dermal collagen a piece of cloth mud or paint also may be present in the entrance wound which help to differentiate between entrance and exit wound and up to two yards the appearance of injury is similar in case of a rifled bore weapon and shotgun because uh, the all pellets that is discharged from the shotgun will enter en masse and uh, if a shotgun is fired at about uh, two yards the marking of pellets are seen in the periphery of the main wounds and uh, in shotgun at uh, six uh, three to eight yards that is uh, around eight meters uh, besides the main wound of entry there are injuries due to other pellets over an area of uh, three to eight inches and beyond eight yards multiple wounds of entry are seen due to individual pellets so if the firing is beyond eight yards yards and a shotgun is used there will be multiple wounds of entry here is a comparison of the entry and exit wounds that are uh, seen in firearm injuries uh, 0.45 the entry wound is like this and the exit wound will be very large and 0.22 this will be the end exit and this will be the entrance you can see the comparative uh, size of the entry wound and exit wound of different uh, firearms that is that is being used what will be the characteristics of wound of exit in case of a close range firing so with a bullet the exit will be the exit wound will be single and with pellets they will be multiple injury is like a laceration and exit wound in a close range firing the shape will be lacerated and bleeding will be profuse the margins are inverted or uh, pointing towards the outside and uh, because the margins are inverted there can be fat protrusion uh, seen and features of close range firing or wound of entry are absent uh, now we can see the features that can be seen in long range firing so with a bullet the, the wound of entry will be single and it is characterized by the presence of the three colors that we have learned earlier abrasion color grease color and the lead color and the actual uh, wound of entry also will be seen so the three colors plus actual wound of entry will be seen uh, in the wound of entry with a bullet in a long range firing there will be no injuries to the associates of the missile that is the uh, only uh, important finding of wound of entry so uh, in the previous that is point blank and uh, uh, close range firing the, the there will be injuries due to associates of missile but in long range firing there will be no injuries due to associates of missile and in shotgun that is uh, with pellets the wound will be wound of entry will be multiple there will be multiple wounds of entry as each pellet enter separately and the area covered or the uh, or the dispersion or the area of dispersion depends upon the range of firing as the dispersion will increase with the range of firing
you can see the entry wound is inverted in case of uh, long range firing and the exit wound will be everted and will be having ragged flaps and uh, if the entry of the missile is perpendicular to the uh, body part it will make a concentric ring or a round uh, shape and if it is oblique or entering tangentially an eccentric ring may be seen so beyond uh, three yards uh, dispersion can occur and the dispersion can also uh, result uh, because the pellets may strike an intermediary hard object like a wall or dart door uh, and this phenomenon is known as the billiard ball ricochet effect and uh, we have already seen about the chalking of the barrel so the chalking of the barrel is done to decrease the dispersion of pellets and chalking is basically done in case of a shotgun uh, fire uh, sh shotgun and uh, the dispersion of uh, pellets can be done by constricting barrel about uh, 8 to 10, 10 centimeter of the length uh, at the muzzle end of the barrel will be constricted and this mechanism is known as chalking of the barrel to control dispersion of the barrel uh, of the pellets sometimes balling or welding that is fusing the uh, pellets with liquid paraffin uh, or is also done to control the dispersion you can see the different uh, chalking types in the picture uh, given in the slide that is uh, uh, full chalk improved cylinder chalk and modified chalk this is no normal uh, cylinder without uh, chalking this is uh, full chalk this is improved uh, cylinder chalk and this is modified chalk you can see the uh, dispersion of the pellets uh, in case of both the uh, true cylinder as well as uh, full chalking. So the dispersion may be full three fourth, half or one fourth. This is the degree of chalking. So at 10 yards, if the cylinder is not chalked, the dispersion will be 19 inches. And on full chalking, uh, the, the dispersion can be reduced to nine inches. In 20 yards, that is the if the range of firing is 20 uh, yards, the dispersion will be about uh, 32 inches. In true cylinder and in full chalking, it is about 16 inches. In 30 yards, the dispersion uh, of true cylinder is about 45 inches. And full on full chalking, the dispersion can be reduced to 20 inches. On 40 yards, the uh, dispersion will be 52 inches in a true cylinder and on full chalking the dispersion can be reduced to 35 inches. So with a true cylinder that is without chalking the dispersion of the pellets in inches is, is one and a half to two times the range of firing in yards and while with full chalking the dispersion in, is, in inches is almost equal to the range of firing in yards. That is, in case of uh, 10 yard firing, the dispersion 9 inch. In 20 yards firing, dispersion is 16 inch. In 30 yard firing, the dispersion is about 20 inch. And in 40 yards, dispersion is about 35 inches. This is the effect of uh, chalking uh, in case of a shotgun. That is, uh, if the cylinder is uh, not, uh, is uh, not chalked or uh, it is a uh, if it is a true cylinder the uh, 40 inch spread will be at uh, 25 yards if it, it is a improved cylinder chalk the 40 inch spread or dispersion will be at 30 yards if it is a modified chalk the 40 inch spread will be approximately at 35 yards and full chalk the 40 inch spread will be approximately at 40 yards. So this is the effect of chalking in case of uh, shotgun uh, weapons. And this uh, procedure is used to reduce the dispersion of the pellets. 
the shape of a wound of exit in a long range firing is single with a bullet and multiple or it can be absent with pellets and they both have the usual characteristics so uh, how can you differentiate the wound of entry and wound of exit this uh, question will be uh, frequently asked for your semester as well as university examination so be familiar with the differences between wound of entry and wound of exit so basically the wound of entry is due to the entry of missile and its associates in the body and wound of exit uh, results due to the exit of missile from the body wound of entry is always present in case of a firearm but uh, sometimes uh, the wound of exit may be absent so in contact firing the wound will be larger than the diameter of the missile due to the uh, gas expansion and also the wound of exit will be larger than the diameter of the missile the shape of a entry wound in a contact firing is an irregular laceration margins everted there can be bursting of body parts due to the uh, gas then muscle marking may be seen in point blank shooting track of wound usually burnt due to the presence of uh, gunpowder and uh, gunpowder particles may be present in the tract of the wound and which can uh, this can be demonstrated uh, while doing autopsy no typical finding of wound of exit in case of contact firing may be the wound appearance is as routine normal and uh, wound of entry the injury is uh, circular uh, and it can be oval or elongated if the firing is at an angle and uh, in case of contact firing the shape will be almost similar whether the bullet enters but perpendicularly or tangentially and wound of exit the usual shape is and is like an irregular laceration the size of injury is uh, smaller than the diameter of missile except in case of contact firing in contact firing the size of uh, wound of entry will be larger than the diameter of missile but in case of uh, lo long range firing as well as close range firing uh, the size of injury is smaller than the diameter of the missile in wound of exit it will be larger than the entry wound the size of injury is usually smaller than the size of wound of exit except in case of contact firing the margins may be inverted except in contact firing due to wound of entry the margin is normally inverted except in case of contact firing but in contact firing due to back splatter the margins will be inverted Uh, in wound of exit the mar margins are uh, mostly inverted and there can be ragged flaps also no fat protrusion will be there in wound of entry but uh, fat will be uh, protruded out through the wound of exit that is a usual feature in wound of entry these three types of collars that we mentioned earlier that is abrasion or contusion collar dirt smudge or grease collar and lead collar will be present and both the, uh, or all of these uh, collars will be absent in uh, wound of exit and a special mention is uh, that the collars that is the three collars will not be present in contact firing as the bullet and their associates of the missile will be entering en, en mass and in close range firing injuries uh, can be due to associates of missile that is burning singing scorching blackening uh, smoke disposition tattooing may be present by unburned gunpowder and if the firing is an at an angle these features are better seen at the part closer to the muzzle end no such features will be seen in the wound of exit metallic pigments like lead antimony etc may be deposited in the wound of entry and uh, no such findings in wound of exit bleeding is usually less because uh, bleeding will be mainly internal bleeding and uh, in case of uh, wound of exit 
there will be profuse bleeding. Increased carbon uh, monoxide levels will be there in wound of entry. So the color of the wound of entry may be cherry red and the wound of exit may show normal color. Swelling present in wound of entry and absent in wound of exit. There will be homogenization of uh, dermal collagen in wound of entry. Nothing seen in wound of exit. Piece of cloth, mud or paint as foreign body may be present in the wound of entry and it can be located uh, during autopsy and uh, no such finding in wound of exit. In skull, the there will be punched in uh, sharp outer table and beveled inner table. And in case of uh, wound of exit, there will be punched out sharp inner table and beveled outer table will be seen. This is the uh, point I was discussing. Uh, in entry wound, it will be like a punched in hole. The outer table will show a sharp margin and the inner table will have a beveled surface or a, a, a slanting surface. And in exit wound, the outer table will be showing beveling and the inner table will be having a sharp margin. Now about ricochet of bullet. The ricochet of bullet is defined as a deviation in the direction of path of the bullet. And ricochet is due to the bullet hitting a hard object and therefore, there can be uh, two types that is external ricochet like this and internal ricochet. Internal ricochet mainly occurs inside the body. So external ricochet may result from bullet hitting a hard object before entering the body. So uh, essentially external ricochet will occur before uh, the bullet uh, enters the body that is it may hit a door a wall or a furniture and so there will be no injuries due to associates of missile so the effect of uh, external ricochet may be the bullet may not hit the target or it may deviate the path and may not hit the target or the bullet may hit a wrong target like a, a civilian may be hit in police firing and uh, because of uh, decrease in velocity or the muscle velocity will be reduced due to external ricochet, the bull bullet may just cause a superficial injury like abrasion or contusion. Sometimes bullet may hit the body tangentially so as to result in a groove or gutter or furrow. Sometimes bullet may hit the body along its long axis so as to cause a large keyhole like wound of entry. And uh, sometimes bullet may enter the body through its base and therefore produces a larger wound. Sometimes uh, external ricochet may, uh, may be like hitting the hard object and by hitting the hard object, the bullet may get deformed, thus it may produce a large wound or uh, after mushrooming, the bullet may produce a large wound than the caliber. And on hitting the hard object, sometimes bullet may fragment and uh, uh, it may enter uh, through multiple wounds of entry. Fragments of the bullet may enter through multiple wounds of entry. So this is the effect of external ricochet. And in case of internal ricochet, that is inside the body, uh, which results on the bullet hitting a bone. So the effect of uh, internal uh, Ricochet may be like bullet fragmentation. So bullet may be fragmented. So even with a single entrance wound, there can be multiple wounds of exit. Sometimes bone may be fragmented. So uh, it can produce multiple false wounds of exit as the fragments of the bone may exit from the body and uh, which may be mimicking the wound of exit. Sometimes there can be deviation in the path of the bullet like this. Uh, sometimes there can be deviation in the path of bullet so that the wound of entry and ex uh, exit are not in the straight line. This uh, is supposed to be the entrance uh, wound and the bullet may take a straight line and exit in the uh, opposite direction or the track will be a straight line. But in case of internal ricochet, the bullet may take a alternate path or the path may be deviated and the 
entrance wound and exit wound will not be in a straight line and sometimes due to uh, deviation the bullet may be uh, lodged in a remote site in the body sometimes a bullet may enter a blood vessel and behave as a bullet emboli sometimes a, a bullet may uh, exit through the wound of entry itself and in the case of skull the ricochet may be may occur from the opposite side of the skull therefore causing different tract of injury and uh, there can be uh, two to four tracks of ricochet may be seen in the skull so that is the effect of uh, ricochet sometimes the appearance of a gunshot wound can be altered by some conditions like drying of the margin of the wound opening decomposition of the body healing of the wound itself interference by emergency care personnel surgical operation on the part and interference by non professional personnel at the scene of crime washing or cleaning of the wound after death so uh, while doing autopsy on a gunshot uh, victim Uh, we have to consider uh, the chances of alteration of gunshot wounds what is the importance of x-ray examination in a gunshot wound victim so the x-ray examination of a gunshot wound victim may help to locate the bullet or pellets in the body may help to locate the bullet fragments or uh, jacket may show the track of the bullet if there is internal ricochet uh, it helps to determine the breakup pattern of the bullet it helps to determine the defects in the bone like fractures etc uh, it helps to locate the bullet embolism and it helps to locate air embolism accompanying large vessel damage by the missile so this is importance of x-ray examination of gunshot wound victims and uh, it may be done before autopsy now uh, about the crime scene investigation of a uh, gunshot uh, wound so a uh, crime scene examination should be conducted before any objects are moved and photographs must be taken from different angles of the crime scene to show the respective position of various items of evidence including the victims and cartridge cases or bullets may be sometimes found under the victim's body or they may be hidden by pieces of furniture etc sometimes the bullet holes in the walls ceiling or in the furniture may be seen in external ricochet and that should be photographed and before undressing the body should be photographed from different angles and after the clothes are removed entrance and exit wound should be photographed with identifying labels and rulers so the bullet pellet and wadding should be found in the body if found in the body should be photographed and all areas that can bear the suspect's fingerprints such as door knobs glassware and the weapon should be examined for fingerprints by fingerprint experts so what are the evidence that can be collected from the crime scene we can collect the gun fired bullets empty cartridge cases shells wads hair fibers and blood stain may be from victim as well as the suspect then the object struck by or containing spent bullets like uh, wood cement etc glass shattered by the bullets areas showing fingerprints and put precise other evidence some of the evidences that can be collected from the crime scene investigation some evidences can be collected from suspect also like uh, clothes with trace evidence victims hand hair clothing fibers blood etc gunpowder and other evidences on the hand like the swabs may be taken from hands to know the gu uh, gunshot residue and if there is a firearm at the scene we have to note uh, some important findings like exactly where it was found in the crime scene 
the type of weapon, whether it is a shotgun, rifle, revolver, or pistol. Mark initials on the butt or frame of the weapon to show its identity. Then the roll and uh, we have to collect the weapon and roll the weapon in a paper and it should be sent to the forensic science laboratory. Sometimes unspent ammunition and empty cartridge or shells also may be uh, collected from the suspect. Now uh, we are uh, moving on to the uh, things that are to be remembered while doing autopsy in case of a firearm uh, death. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to uh, carefully examine the clothing and the clothes should be examined in situ, that is in the proper position and in relation to the body uh, injuries of the body. We have to take photographs of the clothing also. We have to cover the tear on clothes with cellophane sheets to prevent the loss of gunshot residues. And we have to remove the clothing layer by layer. And uh, we have to list the clothing and their uh, conditions and extent of blood staining. We have to record the number and location of bullet holes. And it should be, uh, you can see the uh, uh, different uh, bullet holes here. We have to record the number and location of the bullet holes and it should be described in relation to the distance from collars, seams, pockets, heat level, etc. And the holes of the clothing should, uh, should be connected to those in the body uh, to determine the direction of fire uh, and the clothes should be dried, air dried and uh, if damp clothes are packed and sent to the forensic science laboratory shrinkage may occur in future and the position of the hole of entry of the missile may be altered and if no exit uh, wound is present either the clothing did not cover the area of the exit or the bullet may be in the clothing or fell away these are the reasons for no exit wound present in the clothing either the clothing did not cover the area of exit or the bullet may be in the clothing or uh, it may be fell away from uh, clothes the size of bullet hole and the extent of suit and powder distribution should be measured and the density of tattooing in the cloth also should be noted. Note whether the uh, fibers of clothing are turned inwards or outwards. And uh, clothing may be uh, forced into the tissues in case of shotgun wounds. So in case of shotgun wounds, the clothing will be uh, found inside the entrance wound. And uh, well, one thing to remember is that probes or fingers, etc., should not be introduced in, through the defects in the clothing as the direction or the distribution of fibers, whether it is in, uh, turned inward or outward, will be changed. And this may cause confusion in deciding the entrance and exit of a bullet. What is the relevance of examination of clothes in, a, uh, in the autopsy of a firearm injury? The examination of clothes will help to establish the range at which the firearm was discharged from the deposition of suit or powder tattooing. Then it will establish which defects are wound of entry or exit. And sometimes it may help to locate the bullet holes. The clothes should be uh, air dried and it should be preserved carefully in a clean brown paper or plastic bag and it should be sent to the forensic science laboratory for testing. The powder greens or uh, gunpowder adherent to uh, clothing should be carefully removed with uh, forceps and preserved in a glass vial as they, be, they may be lost from clothes due to uh, rough handling. So the powder grains which are adherent to the clothing should be carefully removed with forceps and it should be preserved in a glass vial and sent to the forensic science laboratory for testing. The clothes should be folded in such a way that the area of bullet holes and gunpowder soiling are not disturbed or contaminated. Sometimes uh, infrared photography may be used to find out the suit deposit on dark colored or black fabrics. X-rays can also be used to search for larger metallic fragments if we suspect the bullet are fragmented. Now, uh, about uh, autopsy of bullet wounds, we have to number the entrance and exit wounds. And if there are multiple wounds, 
it is advisable to give a number to each wound and uh, uh, disregarding whether it was caused by entry or exit we don't have to uh, determine whether it is an entry or exit wound we have to just number the multiple wounds then photographs of the wound uh, has to be taken and the bullet wounds each and every bullet wound must be described with care so the exact location of each wound and its relation from the top of head or from the sole of foot should be described whether it is in the midline of the body or uh, how much distance from the midline of the body or from a fixed anatomical landmark so location uh, should be carefully uh, described. This is the example of a uh, wound description, uh, the location of entry wound, the size and description of entry, clothing at entry, radiographic appearance, track and injuries in uh, sequence, including blood and cavities, hematomas and associated features, recovery location, what was recovered, how recovered and how marked exit wound location and description, clothing at exit, the direction in anatomical position and other notes. This is the uh, typical uh, description of a firearm wound. External appearance of a bullet wound in autopsy, the character of perforation uh, should be noted, the shape and size also should be noted. The presence of abs or absence of blackening and tattooing should be specifically noted. This will help in estimating the range of firing. Skin splits, whether it is continuous or non-continuous should be mentioned. Muzzle imprint if present should be mentioned. Soot particles, uh, including the corona if present will be uh, described. Uh, sometimes they can be metal deposition. That feature also should be in the report. And after the wound has been examined, the skin around the entrance and exit wound should be cut in a dimension 2.5 cm by 5 cm. And uh, the skin should be packed separately, in rectified, preferably in rectified spirit, and it should be labeled and sent to the Forensic Science Laboratory for further examination. The blood tracks should be uh, numbered and described individually. So we have to describe the wound of entrance and exit and also the bullet tracks in the body should be numbered and described one by one. And the path taken by the bullet through the body should be carefully traced by dissection with the organs in situ. So before doing autopsy, we have to examine the bullet tracks that are present in the body. And all the projectile paths in the torso body should be followed through the body cavities. And it is useful to measure the height of both entrance and exit wound from the under surface of the heel also. So the bullet track should be described. Each and every bullet track should be described in relation to the plane of the body that is from front to back or from back to front or from left to right or from right to left, from above downwards or below upwards. This is the bullet tract which shows cavitation also, the, the main cavity that is the permanent cavity caused by the bullet is seen here and the temporary cavity due to expansion of gases also uh, seen here. So uh, sometimes the tract of bullet is unpredictable uh, due to internal recouche or due to uh, deflection by the bone and the bullet may be found in a most unexpected situation. So when a cavity has been penetrated and the blood has collected, the blood should be searched in the effused blood because it can uh, turn to a bullet emboli. Uh, if it is present in the uh, blood vessel and if it is present in a blood clot, it should be uh, searched thoroughly. And to avoid prolonged search for the bullet in the body, before doing autopsy, an X-ray examination is indicated and if there are multiple tracks each track should be followed from the point of entrance to the termination that is from the point uh, entry wound to the exit wound we have to follow the track bullet tracks and all bullets and recognizable parts of the bullet in the victim must be recovered
and described as to whether it where it was found whether it is intact deformed or fragmented whether it is lead or jacketed so all bullets uh, should be recovered can see the different uh, x rays that are taken uh, that is uh, here you can see the bone uh, fragmentation uh, you can see the entrance as well as exit wound here entrance will be uh, this and this is a tract of uh, bullet and this is the exit wound and in ct scan you can see the bullet uh, entry and uh, this is the exit wound here also this is the entry and this is the exit wound and uh, skin offers greater resistance to penetration next to bone so the greatest resistance uh, to penetration will be by the bone and the next uh, thing that offers greater resistance to penetration to bone is skin so a uh, bullet uh, if passing through a body may come to rest underneath the skin on the opposite so so while passing through the body uh, energy will be spent by the bullet and uh, it may not uh, have the energy to penetrate the skin so it may become uh, it may come to rest underneath the skin on the opposite side the location and character of exit wounds should be noted and all wadding should be recovered to know the gauge of the shotgun so wadding uh, the diameter of the wadding is will be equal to the gauge of the shotgun so the wadding if present in the body should be recovered to know the gauge or caliber of the shotgun and the type of ammunition that is being used now bullet tracked in the brain you can see the uh, crush cavity wound cavity as well as the stretch cavity this is the cavitation that you can see in the brain and if almost all the energy of the bullet is lost during penetration of the scalp bone and dura it uh, passes through the brain without producing cavitation until it comes to rest so cavitation of uh, brain will be seen in high velocity bullet if the velocity is low cavitation will not be produce and if the bullet passes through the brain with great velocity the wound tract expands immediately after the bullet has passed through. so this type of cavitation may be seen in high velocity bullets and if skull fractures extend beyond the area of entrance and exit and the cavitation is very severe the skull may burst by the pressure of the brain so in case of uh, grade uh, grade uh, of a bullet with a great muscle velocity the uh, cavitation be very severe and uh, because of cavi uh, excessive cavitation the skull may be burst by the pressure of the brain and a large portion of the brain may be thrown out of a bursting skull and it may be found relatively intact and this type of injury is called cronlin shot this is the uh, shape of uh, cronlin shot so due to excessive pressure exerted on the brain the uh, skull may burst open and this is called cronly shot there can be herniation conditions of the para hippocampal gyri in brain and cerebellar tonsil which may be caused as the brain tissues are violently thrust against the edge of the tentorium and foramen magnum respectively sometimes the uh, orbital plates may be fractured uh, in case uh, the bullets are having small caliber and uh, low velocity it may produce cavitation but uh, it may ha not have the energy to penetrate the uh, skull of the opposite side so it may remain in the skull cavity and sometimes uh, the entire track of one segment uh, is found several times larger than the bullet and this occurs when the bullet passes sideways through the tissues or when it tumbles the uh, picture you can see the uh, how different bullets penetrates uh, these are the different types of bullet and uh, the track that is obtained by the bullet may be seen you can see uh, in case of rifle or high velocity uh, guns like ak47 m16 m14 uh, 12 gauge gun and uh, 0.45 automatic 0.37 mag 
this type of uh, high velocity missiles produce cavitation and low velocity will uh, show less cavitation point to to long rifle will be showing less uh, cavitation now uh, coming to the last part that is uh, preservation and uh, marking and packing of exhibit so all bullets have to be recovered from the body and the recovered bullets must be preserved with correct labeling of the relationship of each bullet to the corresponding wound and it is important to state from which portion of the body or from which internal organ it was removed and when more than one bullet or other foreign object has been removed from the body of a victim or found in or about his clothing each one should be labeled so each separate bullet should be labeled and packed separately in a separate envelope and it should be labeled also while removing the bullet from the body uh, we have to take extra uh, caution to uh, produce any artifacts or marks uh, because uh, such type of scratches uh, should not be produced on the bullet so uh, if such markings or artifacts are present in the bullet uh, by the autopsy surgeon it makes difficult subsequent identification of the bullet and it is preferable to remove the bullets with bare fingers and if a, for a forceps is used it should be the ends of the forceps should be protected by rubber uh, tubing the appearance of the bullet also should be uh, described accurately and the bullet should be weighed and if the base of the bullet is not deformed the diameter of the base also should be measured and the recovered bullet should be dried and it should not be washed because washing removes the gunpowder residues and in gunshot injury the bullet uh, the doctor need not recover each and every pellet present a few pellets should be recovered for the balancing ballistic expert to determine the shot size and the possible type of ammunition all buckshot pellets must be collected because they appear similar to uh, bullets on x-ray examination so bullets should be recovered fully but in case of uh, shotguns the the doctor did not recover each and every pellet present but in case of buckshot bullets uh, because they appear as bullets in x-ray examination they should be collected all of the uh, buckshot pellets must be collected how to ID uh, put identification marks on the different exhibits the firearm the, ID the identification marks should be scratched onto the gun's frame it may be on the receiver on the slide or on the gun barrel fired uh, cartridge cases the identification mark should be scratched on the inside of the open end of the fired uh, cartridge case and they should be wrapped in cotton and packed to uh, cardboard boxes the fired bullets if uh, we collect fired bullets the identification mark should be scratched on the base or uh, just about the riflings but uh, not on the end of the nose and uh, these fired bullets should be wrapped in cotton and packed in uh, cardboard box and each uh, fired bullet should be packed separately the pellets slugs wads etc should be packed in cardboard box with cotton after drying and the container should be labeled with the details the clothes uh, the area of uh, powder tattooing in the clothes should be preserved by fastening with a cellophane paper uh, to prevent the loss of gunshot residues over it and it should be packed in a box so we are coming to the end of the lecture here in this lecture we have discussed about the different types of firearm injuries and uh, how the range of firing affect the firearm injuries then we discussed about the difference between entrance and exit wounds and in the next part we discuss about the things that are to be uh, remembered in a crime scene investigation how special uh, the autopsy uh, of a firearm wound will be then some instructions on the 
preservation, marking, and packing of the exhibits that are found on the firearm uh, wounds, and finally the identification marks that are to be put on the exhibits. So we are coming to the end of uh, this session. And in the next uh, uh, lecture, we will be dealing about the medico-legal aspects of firearm wounds. Thank you.